All right. This is part two of the um, expert builder web. The more observant of you would have realized that my last two conclusions were wrong in the wrong order. Greater than 70K, no criminal record means loan. So that should actually be loan for you. And the yes, I have a criminal record, but I'm a rich one. No loan for you. All right, so now we've implemented the tree, we have to save it. Now, I've been very, very brief here. All of these little branches have extra annotation and a good expert system would fill that out. Um, for the brevity of this tutorial, I've left them blank, but you shouldn't. When you're building an expert system, you should make sure that all these little plus menus have stuff in them, because otherwise the expert system is not friendly for a novice. The reason you're building an expert system is to make a complicated universe easy for a novice to use. Now I've got my tree, I can close the tree and I can interrogate it. So that's actually what it's called when you're, when you're consulting or using an expert system, you're actually interrogating the, the knowledge base. You click on that little magnifying glass to search it. Okay, so our process starts with let us determine your loan suitability. When I click on that, the very first question it asks is, what's my income? Let's say I'm between 30 and 70K, which is be a dream for a teacher, I guess. All right, how many, job, how many years in the current job? I've had plenty of years. I'm gonna go greater than five. And it says loan for you. Therefore, according to this system, it would give me a loan. And if you look, the way, the, the way it has plated up the conclusion, there's a space for the notes. We left those blank, but we'd put them in. We'd put notes in there saying, you seem to be a good credit risk. You've got good jo job stability and you've got a reasonable income, blah de blah But you'll also notice the expert system is showing you the rule it used to determine that conclusion. Um, and that's sort of interesting too, because it's actually surfacing the logic that it used on its pathway down through the tree. When we go back to the original question, we can also see the knowledge base in a couple of different forms. So we've got an expert system knowledge base link here. I might open that in a new tab and show you what that looks like. We've seen the tree, the decision table, that's another one, and the attributes list. I'll open that up as well and just show you what's in those different views of the information system. So you'll notice in this case, this no, the knowledge base is a whole bunch of if-then rules because that's how it's actually storing the information from the tree. So it's actually translated the tree into a bunch of if-then rules. And the extra attributes in those little plus, plus menus go in here as well, just to richly annotate each of these rules. Here's a decision table. Now the decision table attempts to put into a matrix the attributes and the conclusions and shows you how they relate to each other. Um, red things are not asked. Green things are actually involved in the decision-making process. Now, it used to be that you could edit this table as the primary way of actually defining an expert system using this tool. But I think the tree is much more intuitive. It forces you to be much more discreet in your decision-making. And the tree generates this. So this is actually live from whatever tree you have designed. In terms of the attributes list, it, this is just a summary of all of the attributes and the text surrounding them and the values associated with them, as well as another view of the notes that you've used to richly annotate your expert system with. Most novices, however, that is people who don't know anything about loan suitability and just want to find an answer, would enter the system via the, the start search prompt, which is what the words that you've chosen to do that. You'll notice that you've also got access to edit your project and you get to the meta information about this, as well as some other cute um, features that are built into the web version of this, including a permalink and, a, and embedding information and stuff like that. Um, this product's come a long way. It used to be uh, an installable program. Now that it's on web built in, built in PHP, um, there's a whole lot of really funky stuff in terms of sharing and creating of websites and things like that, that you can use it. And you should have a look at that because that's quite an interesting feature. 